Hello everyone, welcome back to Cozy Tea. It's Rob here. How are you doing today? I hope you're doing great. I'm excited to bring you this walking animation that I made with Procreate Dreams. Let's get into it. So we're starting off here with the background art. I did make all of the backgrounds for this using Daniel Smith watercolors as well as 100% cotton based paper. So that is how this process goes. I'm not going to show all three, but here's just a little bit of that work process so you can see how that went. And then I'm going to show you the three final pieces. You can see the three final pieces now. We've got scenes one, two, and three. The first one, the character is going to be walking towards the camera and kind of in an aerial view. It's an inspired European-esque alleyway, if you will. And then the second scene is a busy street with a crosswalk where they're gonna be walking across the screen. And the final one, I'm gonna mix the two. I'm basically recycling the walk cycle for both of them. They're gonna walk towards and sideways into like a living quarters downtown area with the KT letters in the background, of course, because that it, that's how I creatively watermark my stuff, you know? Uh, no shame to any other watermarking, though. All watermarking is valid. For the walking animations, I did choose to do this in Procreate, the drawing app, because they have all the tools available there. So as I said in my previous video, sometimes it's easier to do the frame by frame by itself in Procreate and then drag those into Procreate Dreams to use. The animation process, I'm starting with the walking forward animation i'm keeping this super simple so i got one leg up the other one's down and then by oh come on <laughs> oops um so basically one foot up one foot down if you will forgive me and it's just going to go back and forth real quick he's also going to be opening an umbrella halfway through that walk cycle towards the end of the screen I did do a walk cycle a while back. I took that video down because I just didn't like it but it would have been great to compare the two unfortunately I'm too eager to get rid of my flaws. The second walk animation is a sideways view. They're gonna be walking across the screen from the left to the right. So that is the angle and perspective that I am working from. And here I am just doing the sketch part and you can see me playing the sketch back just to see how the cycle's looking. And I'm going to trace over this part to make it a little bit crisper and clear. From there, we're gonna add color and make it all solidified. I'm also going to add the umbrella and then I'm going to position these frames so that it looks like there's a little bit of a bob motion as they walk because no one's like perfectly linear as they're walking. So we wanna make sure we add some of that organicness into that walk cycle. For the perspective of the forward walk, I hit the record button, I selected the track, and then I moved the character forward onto the canvas. Now, because the character is getting closer, they're obviously going to get bigger from the perspective. So I go back to the beginning of the track, I select the bottom left of that, and while it's moving out, I also enlarge it. So now we've got a recording of it moving, moving forward, as well as a recording of it getting bigger. So it makes sense with the perspective. There's a couple ways to control the speed of this. Obviously, the faster you move it across the screen, the faster it's going to move across the screen. But you can also increase the size of the frames within the track or change the frame rate itself and the settings. But you can manipulate all of these things to get different speeds of frame rate within the same animation file. It's a little bit complicated. Maybe I'll make a separate video on that. If that's something you want to know about how to manipulate frame rates in one animation file, let me know in the comments and I will definitely take that into consideration as a future video option. So let me know. Rain is really simple to animate if you actually keep it natural. When you think about rain, it doesn't fall in like a uniform fashion. It's literally crashing to the surface of the earth as fast as possible. So don't overthink rain. Just get your marks on, try to keep them somewhat linear, but you don't have to focus too much on that. They're gonna be moving across the screen very quickly. So the focus isn't going to be on the rain. They're more of an asset to the whole image itself. However, if rain is the focus of your animation, that's where you wanna put more work into the rain droplets themselves and keeping a sense of uh, uniformity in that, if you will. 
For the first scene, I animated water going into the sewer drains. I didn't do this for the last scene because I feel like while watching it back, it was missed because of the speed of the clips. So um, maybe a little bit of displaced effort, but it was still fun to do. And I think it looks all right if you can catch it. It moves by really fast. It is there, but I didn't include it in the final clip because it was going so quickly. All right, so for the side view walking animation, Typically, I would just press the record button and drag it across the screen, and I did do that at first. The problem was it looked like the character was walking on ice. So instead of doing that, I decided to make it look more organic by lining up the footsteps together, by placing them where the footfall actually goes, and then lining all of that up accordingly. It took a little bit more time to do that, but I think the result was worth the effort versus doing it the other way. The other way is totally valid. There's nothing wrong with doing that, but this is just a creative choice that I made. You could do it either way. Once the walking cycle is drawn, it, the effort is really over. That's the hardest part, in my opinion. So if you want to do press record drag or you want to line them up one by one, it's going to look good either way. To finish up this part of the scene, I do add some water droplets splashing onto the umbrella. I did this in the other scenes, but because the perspective is so different and the umbrella is so small, it's actually kind of hard to see those droplets. But here, the umbrella is much bigger, it takes up more space, and it's more visible on the canvas, so it would make sense to have those droplets there also. So I went on and I added those individually across the screen as well. For the crosswalk background, I wanted to make the lights flicker a little bit just to add a little bit more of an organic feel, as I always say and that cohesive cohesion, cohesive cohesion, hard to say. But anyway, so I do the car lights and then I do the city lights and I do these separate just so there's a little bit more randomness because they're all uniform within themselves. So having them go at their own rates kind of adds a little bit of diversity. And that is the end of this scene. So for the final scene, I have two layers of this same background. We have a foreground and the background. The foreground has a portion of it erased. The reason I did this is because in the original watercolor painting, I had clothing lines across the buildings. And this created a conundrum because if the character's walking towards the viewer, at one point they're going to be behind those clothing lines, and then at another point they're going to be in front of them. Had I thought about this ahead of time, I probably would have just drawn the clothing lines digitally. So it's a learning process. I'm learning as I go. I'm clearly an amateur at this, but these are the, the fun little things that come up while I do this and I quite enjoy it. So crunch time was happening towards the end of this video and I want the character to walk into his house. I really went as easy as possible with this. I didn't even have him undo his umbrella. All right, we're trying new things as people. We're, we're daring the dares, walking indoors with the umbrella open. Let's see what happens. It's already bad. Will this make it worse? I don't know. I had a black bar just across and that looks like the door is opening and closing real quick. And then he's inside and he's living his cozy little life in this cozy little living area. I hope that you got something out of today's video. I really enjoyed making it. As always, the process is what wakes me up in the morning. I hope that you were able to find some creative ambition and be inspired to do something cool today. No matter how it turns out, the fact that you did it is what matters. I know very well sometimes it's hard to wake up in the morning. And as long as you keep doing it, I promise there will be a day worth waking up for. So don't give up on yourself and keep trying because art is hard you don't need to be hard on yourself for it i'm going to show the animation here right now so stay for that and enjoy the presentation i will see you guys next time stay cozy i'll see you next time peace see ya goodbye hey we did it